Okay, hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to this uh, webinar brought to you by fxstreet.com. My name is James Chen. I am the chief technical strategist at uh, City Next Group, based out of uh, the UK. Uh, so, hello, everyone, and uh, I do apologize for those of you who tried to make it to my last two canceled webinars with FX Street in the past couple weeks. Uh, I've been uh, very sick for. Uh, uh, you know, with the flu for, for, uh, you know, more than a full week. So, uh, I'm still trying to recover from that, but, uh, hopefully we can have a good webinar here today. Uh, so I do apologize for that. Okay. So, uh, today, uh, will be my high probability trend following entries and exits webinar. And today I'm going to focus in on one of the aspects of, um, trend following, uh, trading in the Forex market, which is, uh, multi time frame trading or multiple time frame trading. So let's get started with that real quick. Again, if you have any questions, uh, please feel, t uh, feel free to type them into the Q&A window or the chat window. Okay, let's get started. Just a quick uh, risk disclaimer before we get started. Financial trading carries a high level of risk to your capital with the possibility of losing more than your initial investment and may not be suitable for all investors. Ensure that you fully understand the risks involved and seek investment advice if necessary. Okay, I'm just going to leave that for a few seconds, and then we'll move forward. Okay, so today what I'm going to be doing is uh, I'm going to be giving you some uh, background on, you know, how I look at the markets from a, a you know, from a, a multi-time frame perspective. And then I'm going to show you, uh, you know, a technique that I use uh, using multiple time frames. And then I'm going to take a look at some of the uh, current major uh, currency pairs and uh, take a look at what I'm looking at uh, there. Okay, so uh, before I get started, real quick, just bef uh, you know, for those of you who are not in, uh, who are not familiar with uh, who I am or what I do, my name again is James Chen. I am the chief technical strategist at City Index Group, City Index Group, that is, uh, which is a sorry about that, which is a uh, a broker of uh, foreign exchange as well as uh, indices and commodities uh, based out of London. And uh, I've been an active Forex trader analyst since the inception of Retail Forex. Using primarily technical analysis, I also trade uh, indices, equities, uh, futures, commodities, and, and all of that. But primarily, I, I focus on the Forex market. Now, I'm also a chartered market technician, which is a, a designation for technical analysts, and I publish daily and intraday market analysis that you'll be able to find at cityindex.co.uk. I've author, also authored numerous articles in these publications, and I've appeared in numerous places, as you can see here. I've authored two books, uh, Essentials of Foreign Exchange Trading and Essentials of Technical Analysis for Financial Markets, as well as a DVD set with FX Street called High Probability Trend Following in the Forex Market. So as you can see, uh, as you can probably see from uh, this, I am uh, primarily a trend trader. So I like to look at the trend, uh, and then I like to look at uh, pullbacks within the trend, and then I'm looking for a resumption of the, uh, of the entrenched trend, and that's what I'm looking to take advantage of when I'm trading or analyzing the markets. And I'll talk about that in a second. Okay, so as I mentioned uh, today, uh, we're going to be talking about multi-time uh, multi frame trading. Now let's go right into the topic here. Uh, just a, a quick few slides, and then I'll go to my charts um, multiple time frames. What, what are we trying to do here? Well, for those of you who are not uh, familiar with, um, you know, what I talk about a lot, uh, which is, uh, you know, my my basic philosophy for uh, trading in any market, which is, uh, you know, it's called TPB, trend pullback breakout. So what I'm looking for is I'm looking for the trend. Any in any market I'm looking at, I'm looking for the trend. Okay, and it could be a long-term trend, it could be a, a, you know, a shorter-term trend, it could be a very short-term trend, but uh, what I'm looking for is the trend, okay? And then once we find the trend, I'm looking for some type of a pullback, and then uh, I'm looking for, um, you know, a breakout in the direction of the trend, so TPB, trend pullback breakout. So that's my main philosophy. Now this can manif this philosophy can manifest itself in many ways, including in this uh, multiple time frame uh, approach, which I'm going to talk about today. So basically, what we're looking to do is we have uh, three different time frames. 
Now, uh, oftentimes, as you'll often notice, different time trains, diff- I'm sorry, different time frames will have different trends. Okay, so on the long term uh, time frame, we may have an uptrend. On the uh, the intermediate time frame, we ha- may have a downtrend. And on the short term time frame, we may have no trend at all. Okay, so is this necessarily uh, going to stop you from uh, making a trade? Well, if you're looking at it from a, a, a multiple time frame perspective, then yes, it should. What we're looking to uh, to get here is we're looking for the different time frames to agree with each other. So we're seeking agreement amongst different time frames, and that's what we're looking to do um, with this particular approach. Now, first of all, uh, we look at the longer term time frame for the trend time frame. Okay, and you probably heard this a lot before. A lot of traders do this. They look on uh, their longest term time frame, let's say the daily chart or the weekly chart, and they're looking for some type of a trend. Okay, and then they're looking for, uh, you know, to drill down into shorter term time frames to look for a potential entries into that trend. And this is no different. Okay, so on the long term time frame, we're looking for the trend time frame, and we will resolve, or at least I will resolve, only to trade in the direction of the trend on the trend time frame. Now, how do we know what's a trend and what's not a trend? What's an uptrend, what's a downtrend, what's uh, no trend at all? Well, uh, you know, very simply, we need to have rules to tell us if there's a trend uh, or if there's not a trend, and if there is a trend, which direction that trend is going, okay? And obviously, uh, we're looking for the strongest trend possible. Okay, so uh, basically we're looking on the longest term time frame for the trend, and uh, there are many ways to do this. Now, it can be determined by trend lines, which I often use. <laughs> if you take a look at any of my analysis, you'll see that I often use uh, trend lines. Um, I also often use moving averages or a combination of moving averages, which I'll show you um, today. Uh, also, you know, if you have enough experience in the market, you can simply look at any market and tell uh, if uh, this looks like it's a strong trend to the upside or to the downside, if it's a weak trend to the upside or to the downside, or um, or if it's um, uh, if it's just a choppy, uh, you know, whipsaw type of uh, you know non-trending situation. So that's uh, usually you could do that. But what I like to do when I trade. Uh, you know, of course, I you know I, I've been looking at charts for uh, for many 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 years, but uh, if uh, you know when I like to trade when I trade what I like to do is I like to have rules. Okay, so I'm going to show you some rules uh, I have, uh, very very simple rules, but uh, rules I have for determining the trend. Okay, now once we have the trend, first of all, if there's no trend on the long term time frame, then we're going to resolve not to trade that particular market. Okay, um, there are plenty of opportunities to trade. And there are plenty of trends uh, out there, okay? Whether on a you know a shorter term basis or a, uh, or a longer term basis, there are many many trends out there that you can take advantage of. But um, you know, if there's no trend, then you know I have no qualms about walking away from that particular market. But if there is a trend, and preferably if there's a strong trend, then I'm looking for pullbacks, okay, on the on the lower time frame, or what I might call the intermediate time frame. So uh, not o- not only am I looking for pullbacks, I'm looking for recoveries of those pullbacks on um, on uh, you know the intermediate time frame. I'm looking for once again, I'm looking for agreement. I'm looking for the intermediate time frame to resume or to agree with the longer term time frame. So it's uh, we're looking for a resumption of uh, of pri- price action in the direction of the trend on the higher time frame. Okay, hopefully that makes sense. Now, um, from there, once we see that recovery, you know, and I'll tell you exactly how my rules for uh, looking at a recovery, but uh, once we see that recovery, then I'm looking to trade a breakout on the lowest, tr- uh, lowest time frame. And what is a breakout? It's simply a movement in the direction of the trend, okay, a break in the direction of the trend, and that's what I'm looking to trigger me into a trade, okay? So along this whole uh, process, I have many opportunities to say, you know what, this, uh, you know, I'm not seeing agreement on the different time frames, and therefore I'm not going to take advantage of this because it looks like it's not a high probability uh, entry into this market, okay? So I, I want to give myself a lot of opportunities to back away from the trade and say, you know, this is not setting up the way I think it should, and therefore I'm going to stay away from this particular market at this particular time. 
Okay, but if it does set up, okay, if you do see the trend on the longest term time frame, you do see a recovery of a pullback, and then you do see a, a breakout uh, on the lowest term uh, time frame, then that is a setup, uh, you know, from, from my perspective, that's a setup, uh, you know, a good high probability setup in the direction of the trend. Okay. Now, on the lowest term time frame, uh, you know, why are we looking to trade the breakout? Well, basically, we want the short term momentum to agree with both the pullback recovery on the, the you know, the next higher time frame up, and then also to agree with the overall tr overall trend on the highest time frame, on the longest time frame. Okay, and I'll show you this all my charts in a minute. And of course, what we always want to do is we want to be able to manage risk, uh, you know, very, very well. I'm not saying have a, an extremely tight uh, stop loss. What I'm saying is you want to be able to manage risk well, which means that you have to be consistent and you have to, uh, you know, uh, set your, uh, your risk management, set your stop losses, et cetera, uh, religiously. So you, you want to be able to have... Uh, you know, you want to be able to prevent any uh, catastrophic losses, and that's uh, of all importance right there, okay? Again, I'm not saying set really, really tight, really close stop losses, because oftentimes when you do that, you're going to be um, uh, whipsawed out of a trade. Uh, but uh, what I am saying is that you need to be consistent, and you have to have prudent risk management. I'll show you one way to do that in a minute. And also use a planned risk-reward ratio, okay? I'm going to go... Uh, a little bit further into this uh, on the next slide, but uh, I'll show you exactly what I mean on the charts in a minute. Okay, so uh, so that's the uh, multiple time frame philosophy. Okay, I'll get into specifics in a minute. <coughs> Some of you may have seen this before. Okay, now why am I doing all this? Why why do I have this approach that I'm using? Well, you know, I have a, a you know this approach comes from my philosophy on uh, entries and exits. Okay. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, there's one way to get into any trade, and that's the right direction at the best possible price, okay? Very simple sentence right there, okay? But it holds a lot of um, meaning to it. What do I mean by that? Okay, what is the right direction? Well, that is simply, as far as I'm concerned, in the direction of the prevailing momentum of the market, which is the trend, okay? So we want to look at the, uh, to get into the right direction, which is with the trend, Okay, with the momentum of the market. Now, what does the best possible price mean? Simply, as far as I'm concerned, it means getting in on a trend on a pullback because that's a good price to get into. Why is that? If you have an uptrend, okay, you want to get in on a pullback on a lower price. Why do you want to do that? I mean, you could very well get in on a breakout. Let's say there's a really strong trend to the upside, and then you look for a breakout above that. Yeah, I mean, a lot of people do that. And I do that as well sometimes. But what I like to do is get in at a better price than the highest price that I see. Okay, so uh, if there's an uptrend and I see a breakout above the, you know, it, it makes a new high. The trend makes a new high, and then uh, I'm looking for a breakout above that high. I could very well do that, but that's not getting in at the best possible price. I would rather look for, uh, and we always have pullbacks, we always have retracements, always have corrections. I would rather look for, within that trend, a place to get in at a better price, which is, in, in the case of an uptrend, a lower price, which means uh, a pullback or a retracement, okay? So lots of meaning there, simple sentence, the right direction of the best possible price. All it means is you get in, uh, uh, you know, on a trend, uh, on a pullback, or preferably, as I'll mention, uh, as I'll talk about later, um, a pullback recovery, okay? A pullback alone is not good enough. Because a pullback, you don't know. If it, if it doesn't show you indication of recovery, then a pullback is simply a move against the trend. And what, what could that mean? That could mean a reversal. It could mean, uh, you know, uh, it could mean a, a consolidation. But, uh, you know, what you don't want to do is get in on a pullback at an arbitrary uh, place on that pullback because how do you know it's not going to continue going against you, uh, going against the trend? And turning into a, a, a you know a bona fide reversal, you don't know that. So I'm looking for indications of a potential turn in price, okay, where the pullback is turning once again uh, uh, in the direction of the trend, and that for me is called a pullback recovery. Okay, now uh, two ways to get out of a trade is simply uh, at a loss where the market tells you you're wrong, 
and uh, I think this makes the most sense, and this is what I do, uh, you know, consistently. Uh, I, I figure out, you know, where uh, the market would be telling me that I'm wrong, and that's where I'm placing my stop loss. That's where I'm pay- placing my risk management. Okay, so very, very simple, very straightforward. When you have a chart in front of you, uh, when you're looking at the technicals, it's very straightforward where to place your your stop loss or your risk management, okay? So where the market is telling you you're wrong. If you're looking for a pullback, if you're playing a pullback on a recovery of a pullback, let's say it's an uptrend, it pulls uh, to the downside, okay, and then it starts moving back to the upside. You got your rules in place. You take that trade. Now, if it subsequently breaks down and breaks down below the low of that pullback, then at that point, that market is probably telling you you were, you know, perhaps premature or you were completely wrong in uh, getting in on that long trade. Okay, so, uh, you know, there are no regrets there. You should take your losses and move on. Okay, um, and hopefully your wins, uh, you know, uh, exceed your losses or the magnitude of your, of your wins or your profits exceed your losses uh, so that you're consistently profitable, uh, which is, you know, again, what everyone is uh, really looking for. Okay, so that's a uh, loss. So two ways to get out. One is a loss where the market tell you, is telling you you're wrong. Um, you know, the second way is at a profit, which is, of course, what we all hope for, uh, and um, that's why we're all trading. So the profit is preferably at a multiple of your defined risk. Now, a lot of people ask me, what exactly do you use as, uh, you know, re- your reward to risk ratio, which is basically this, uh, you know, multiple of your defined risk? Well, you know, it could be a lot of things. When I say multiple, it could be one-to-one. It could be two-to-one, three-to-one. And, when uh, you know, when I say that, I mean the reward to risk, one-to-one. Two-to-one uh, two is simply your reward is twice your risk. Three-to-one is uh, three times your risk. Um you know, you could uh, you could set that according to your strategy, according to your approach. You know, I have uh, different reward to risk ratios for different approaches that I use. Uh, generally speaking, though, I like to keep it above two to one. Okay, and some people will have um, will will take issue to this, but uh, you know, a lot of people do very well at one to one, or even their reward is less than their risk. But you have to have some things in place in order to make that work. Okay, so uh, what I prefer to do is to have at least a two-to-one reward-to-risk ratio, at least for the approaches or the strategies that I use. Okay, so uh, you want your profit to be preferably at a multiple of your defined risk, so that means that even though uh, you may uh, win as much as you lose, uh, you're still coming out net uh, net profitable uh, in the end, and that is, uh, you know, exactly what you're looking to do. <laughs> okay, so this is my, um, you know, this goes along with my approach, uh, my TPB trend pullback uh, breakout approach, as well as this multiple time frame approach that I'm going to be talking about in a second. Okay, let's move on real quick. Uh, and then this is the last slide before I get to uh, my charts. Uh, entry filters. Now, uh, what is the point of the last, the, the shortest term time frame? Well, we want to, we don't want to get into, arbitrarily get into any trade. Why am I looking for a breakout? Well, that's simply my entry filter on my shortest term time frame, okay? Now, we want to add a breakout criterion. Why? Um, You know, this helps build a stronger case for the trade, okay? Why is that? Well, if you've got the trend on the longest term time frame, and then on the, uh, the next lower time frame, you've got a pullback recovery, okay? And the shortest time, term time frame, we're drilling all the way down. We're looking for an entry. Why are we looking for uh, a breakout on the lowest term time frame? Well, simply, I'm looking for a breakout just to see that short-term momentum. I'm trying to gather my edges here. I'm trying to gather trading edges. So I'm looking for short-term momentum to agree with the, uh, with the trend, the overall trend, as well as the pullback recovery. That's why I'm looking for a breakout. Okay, so uh, what exactly do I mean by breakout? Well, it could be, and this is what I oftentimes use, it could be a breakout above or below the last bar. So let's say you get a signal, okay? Uh, you have a trend on the four-hour time frame. You drill down to the, uh, to the um, one-hour time frame, and you see that you have a pullback recovery, okay? Maybe you're using some indicator or what have you to show you a pullback recovery. 
Then you drill down to the, uh, uh, let's say, the 15-minute chart or the 10-minute chart or 5-minute chart or, wh or whatever you want to use, okay? At that point, I'm looking for, you know, I've got the signal to go, but I'm looking for the trigger to actually get into the trade. And that breakout for me is giving me some indication that perhaps uh, short-term uh, momentum is agreeing with my other two time frames, and therefore that gives me yet another edge on this particular trade. Now, could it break out and then go the uh, opposite direction on the on the very next bar? Absolutely, it could. Okay, but we're we're you know what we're doing here is we're trying to gather probabilities, gather edges here. Okay, of course it could go against you right when you get in. Of course, and it, and it often will. But we want to put all the probabilities that we can on our side, and that's why I'm looking to do this. Okay, so uh, so we're looking to. Um, uh, to help filter out trades that, uh, that you know, that don't have that short-term momentum. And, uh, you know, if the breakout occurs, you know, arguably, the short-term momentum is more likely to be in your direction than if no breakout occurs. And, uh, you know, using this type of an entry filter, oftentimes I'm kept out of trades that ultimately just did not work. And that is always a good thing. If you're prevented from going into trades that, uh, you know, uh, if you're often prevented from going to trades by a filter like this, then it's worth using. Okay. Okay, so let's move forward real quick. Ah, let's go to the charts. Okay, if you bear with me for one second here. Okay, hopefully you can see uh, my charts here. Now, um, okay, so I'm going to go through uh, what I see on uh, some of the different uh, charts uh, in terms of, uh, you know, what I see from a longer term perspective, et cetera. But for now, let me just show you this uh, strategy. Okay, so uh, what we're looking at here is um, is a euro dollar chart, okay? And, and I went back a little bit in time. Uh, and I'm going to go all the way to the present time. But uh, for now, let's uh, let's look at, uh, if you could take a look down here, it says uh, Euro-Dollar four-hour chart, uh, and then Euro-Dollar uh, one-hour chart, and then Euro-Dollar 15-minute chart, okay? So we're, we're just uh, dealing with Euro-Dollar right now. I have two different uh, moving averages here, okay? This one in blue, this is a 50-period moving average. This one in uh, brown or orange is a, or yeah, it's chocolate, I guess. It's a 20, uh, 20 period moving average. So this is a four hour chart. So, uh, this means this is 20 four hour periods and this is 50 four hour periods. Now simply what I'm looking for on this particular time frame, which is my long term time frame, I'm looking for the trend. Okay. And what is a trend? Um, you know, a trend is simply, uh, is simply the, uh, the, uh, longer term moving average underneath the, the shorter term, the shorter term moving average, or the shorter term moving average above the longer term moving average, and that's an uh, uptrend. Okay, what's a downtrend? A downtrend is simply a longer term moving average on top and a shorter term moving average on the bottom. Okay, so that is my, uh, the, you know, that's my rule. Okay, for uh, this particular uh, strategy, that's my rule for uh, where is a trend. Okay, now once I have this in place. You know, as you can see here, you know, this crossover right here, if you could take a look at my crosshairs, this crossover here means, uh, does this mean that, um, you know, that where the uh, long-term moving average is on top, the 50 is on top, the 20 is on the bottom, does that mean that it's a downtrend? Uh, you know, look at it, and you could obviously see that it's not, but at the same time, I'm going by my rules, okay? So uh, I'm going to be sticking by my rules, so if... Uh, you know, we have a longer-term moving average on bottom. The shorter on top, that's an uptrend. If the uh, uh, longer-term moving average on top, shorter on the bottom, that's downtrend, okay? But there are a lot more filters to keep me out of trades like this, okay, where, uh, you know, it says that it's in a uh, downtrend, but it really isn't. Okay, so um, uh, first let's start over here. Um, so if we take a look right here, what I'm looking for is uh, once we have a trend in place, we're looking for a pullback to the uh, uh, to the um, 
uh, the longer term moving average, the 50 here. Okay, so we're we're looking for a pullback to the 50. Okay, we're looking for a pull to the 50 or more. All right. Once that occurs, we are looking on the intermediate time frame for a uh, for another signal. Okay, and I'm going to go through this real quick, and then I'll go through the different ones. Uh, I'll go through a bunch of different examples so uh, it makes sense. Okay, so um, what we have here, so we take a look here. Uh, we have a pullback. Okay, so we have a trend. We got a pullback to the uh, the longer term moving average. Once we have that. I'm drilling down and I'm looking for uh, uh, this right here. Okay, so this is on the one hour chart, which is my intermediate chart. I'm looking for a pullback and a breakout above the oversold area. And this is a stochastic, slow stochastic 14.33. Okay, so uh, this is what I'm looking for, a cross above there. Okay, once that cross above there occurs, and this is this, uh, at the same time that this occurs. So once you see that price pulls back, to this or more, then you're going to be waiting for, uh, you know, for uh, this type of a cross right here, okay, where it crosses up above the, uh, above the oversold line on the intermediate chart, which in this case happens to be the one-hour chart. Once that happens, then we drill down to the 15-minute chart, and we are looking for, uh, we're looking for a break to the upside, okay? Okay, so now let me go uh, through this. Uh, hopefully that makes sense. Now let me go through this. Um, uh, you know, methodically here. <laughs> okay, so uh, what we have here is we have an uptrend. Um, this is not such a great example, but it's an example nonetheless. And, and, you know, you can't cherry pick, you know, what's a good example or not. We just look for where the strategy uh, brings up an opportunity, and we take the opportunity, and we have our uh, stop loss in place. But this is what happens right here. Okay, so we have this uptrend. We have the longer-term moving average of 50 under the, thir uh, under the 20, which means that for this particular strategy, we are in an uptrend. We see a pullback that goes to the uh, long-term moving average of 50 or more, okay, in this case, or lower. Once that occurs, we're looking uh, on the uh, intermediate chart. We're looking for some type of a, um, some type of a turn. Okay, and this turn is exemplified by this right here. It crosses, a, you know, price uh, the uh, oscillator should the stochastics should be under the overbought in case of an uptrend, and it should cross above that. Once that occurs, then you drill down to the 15-minute chart, and uh, here's the same time. Okay, this is December 7th, uh, 2012. Rest assured, I'm going to go through the rest of. Uh, uh, you know, uh, to more recent times, but, uh, you know, I'm just uh, showing you the examples here. So once this occurs, okay, and uh, this happened to occur right here, okay, on this particular um, candle right here, on this 15-minute candle, okay. Now, I'm looking for a breakout. Remember I said I'm looking for a breakout? I'm looking for a breakout above this, uh, uh, above the signal candle, okay, uh, for the trigger candle, which means I'm looking for a trigger to get into this trade, into a long trade. So I'm looking for a breakout above this green candle, this uh, the one with the long wicks right here. Okay, so I'm looking for that, looking for a breakout. Doesn't occur. Okay, now I move to the second one. Uh, I'm looking for a breakout above this candle right here. It also doesn't occur. Okay, now uh, it moves down. Now I'm looking for a breakout above this candle, and then on the next candle it occurs. Okay, what did I succeed in doing by doing that, uh, by looking for that breakout? Well, basically, I got in at a better price, an even better price than just looking for this pullback right here, okay? So uh, it moves down. I'm moving the uh, point of breakout lower and lower, which means I'm getting in at a better and better price. If it keeps moving down, then I probably won't even get into this trade, okay, because uh, I'm looking for this breakout in the short-term time frame, which in this case is a 15-minute. So this breakout occurs. At that point, I take the, uh, you know, I could take the trade, it goes up for a little. It goes back down. Where is my stop loss? My stop loss on the 15-minute chart is right under the low of the pullback. Um, why is that? Because if uh, if it subsequently comes down and uh, takes me out of that uh, trade, then that's the market telling me that uh, I'm, I'm wrong there. It's going to keep going down. This is not a recovery of a pullback. This is uh, instead uh, maybe it's a reversal. Maybe it's an extension of the pullback against the uh, overall trend. Okay, and then I'm out of the trade, no regrets, I'm done with that trade, uh, you know, I take my loss, and uh, I walk away, and then I look for another opportunity, okay? So here, though, we see this breakout to the upside, 
And uh, you could, what you could do once you get into this trade, you can manage your trade, um, or you could just, uh, you know, uh, sort of, you know, excuse my uh, uh, cliche here, but set it and forget it, and uh, you know, put your stop loss and then uh, and your profit target, and then maybe it'll go your way. And uh, in this case, it does. Okay, um, uh, maybe it'll go your way uh, after all these 15-minute bars. But uh, you could do that, or you can manage your trade. Uh, once it goes in your direction, you could, uh, you know, pull your stop loss to break even or what have you, and then from there you could uh, uh, trail your stop loss. Uh, you could possibly do that as well, okay? But um, it, it's up to you. Now, how do you set your uh, how do you set your profit target? There are many ways to do it. Uh, you know, as I mentioned, you have uh, an entry level right here, okay? So this breakout above here was an entry level. Once you have that entry level. You could place your stop loss right under the low of the low of the last major low, okay? Under the pullback, okay? So you place your uh, stop loss under the pullback. If you get taken out, then you you, uh, you have a, a loss. You have a small loss. If you don't get taken out, then uh, what you could do is uh, remember what I said about the multiple of your uh, risk, your profit being multiple of your risk. What I'm looking for is uh, two or three times uh, my risk to uh, represent my reward, my profit target. And that way, you can get stopped out, uh, you know, relatively often and still be, uh, you know, net profitable in the long run because, uh, you know, again, you're gathering your edges, you're looking for the trend, you're looking for a pullback recovery, you're looking for the breakout. If it doesn't work, it doesn't work. And you take your loss. If it works, then you're making a multiple of your loss. And in the end, you know, this should provide you with uh, um, consistent net profitability. On this particular strategy. Okay, so let's go back uh, real quick and show you. So this was not a perfect example because it does go against you after you uh, get in, but uh, not enough to take you out of the trade. Okay, so we, let's move further up. Um, this again is on the longer term chart, the four-hour chart. We have another opportunity right here. This was on uh, you know the end of uh, last year. We had an opportunity right there. Okay, it goes back to the line. It touches the line from there. Uh, what do we do? We go to the uh, we go to the intermediate charts, which is the one hour chart, and that happens to be right here. Again, not also not a great trade. Okay, on um, the 26. Okay, so it pulls back uh, and then pulls back into the upside. We move to uh, the lowest term time frame. We look for the same time. Okay, and that happens to be right here. On here, it looks good because it's a 15 minute chart. Okay, so you get into this trade, uh, you know, right about here. Again, you use the breakout methodology. In this case, it broke out, uh, and you got into the trade immediately. Okay, it goes your way. It pulls back, but eventually, uh, you know, you get something out of that. Okay, now, so those are not great examples because uh, what happened there was that, uh, uh, you know, there, there was some whipsaw, but, you know, eventually the trade worked. But what I'm looking for is something like this, Okay. So these types of trades are very, very good. So uh, these types of runs, and you see this often. This was uh, very recently. This was uh, in uh, February. Yep, Jack. Uh, Jack, good question. Oh, I'm sorry, MRCC breakout of what on 15? Uh, okay, on the 15-minute chart, we're looking for a breakout of the, the signal uh, bar, okay, the signal candle. Okay, so once again, Let's let's go back. Uh, you know, on the hour, on the four-hour chart, we're looking for the trend, okay? And then we're looking for um, a pullback to the uh, longer-term moving average, okay? And then on the four-hour, on the one-hour chart, which is an intermediate chart, we're looking for a recovery of the pullback on a, uh, the stochastic's uh, uh, break of overbought or oversold, okay? And then on the 15-minute chart, once we have all that done, on the 15-minute chart, we're simply looking for, uh, you know. A breakout above the of the last bar if it's in an uptrend, or if it's in a downtrend, a breakout below the, the the below the last bar. Okay, that's what the breakout I'm looking for. Okay, hopefully that makes sense. Jack, when pullback it seemed no one dared to buy that low. In post analysis it seems easy. Yes, in post analysis it does seem easy, um, uh, and it's true nobody dares to buy that low. But that's simply something that uh, you should be looking to do, okay? When, uh, you know, yeah, I mean, uh, if it goes, uh, if, uh, if there's a counter trend move and it goes against you uh, and then uh, you, but, you know, you want to see indications of that 
turn occurring before you get in. Yeah, I mean, you're looking to get in low, but you're looking for uh, indications of a turn occurring. And that's why we're using all these filters, okay? And, you know, it's always the case in post-analysis that seems easy. Um, so, you know, the best thing to do would be to sit in a trading room and wait for these, uh, you know, wait for these opportunities to occur. So, uh, but, uh, you know, that's, uh, that's not really uh, uh, practical for this type of a webinar. Um, Boyke, why not use daily as the long-term time frame? Yeah, no, a great, great uh, point. Why not use a uh, daily as a long-term time frame? The re I usually use a daily as a long-term time frame, but the the reason I'm doing this is that most people are shorter term. Uh, most people prefer uh, shorter term time frames and don't have the patience for the longer term time frames. I'm usually, as you know, Boyke, I'm usually uh, a longer term trader. Okay, but uh, you know, most people they, they don't have the patience or the um, you know. Or the uh, the willingness to to uh, trade on the long term time frames. Now, if you go to the shorter term time frames, it's fine too. Okay, but but you gotta again, you gotta gather your probabilities on your side. Okay, so if you're just uh, doing shorter term time frames and um, you know and just getting into it for no reason at all, then uh, you know it makes it very difficult to trade uh, to trade profitably. So great point, Boy Boyke. Yes. You could use the daily as your long-term time frame. You could use, let's say, the four-hour uh, chart as your intermediate time frame, and then you could use the, uh, the one-hour chart as your uh, shortest-term time frame. That's all doable. But for this particular, uh, you know, um, webinar, uh, I'm using this, uh, you know, the shorter-term time frames. Okay. All right, so very quickly, uh, you know, so I, I showed you some examples that were not the best examples, but they worked out nonetheless, okay, especially for shorter-term trades. Uh, now, this is really where it works the best, okay, and this type of, uh, this occurred, uh, you know, starting starting in uh, mid-February, uh, which was uh, just last month, or I'm sorry, two months ago. So it started, uh, this this uh, launch of the downside in euro dollar, and you all know about this and, and remember this, uh, two months ago, uh, this long run to the downside had many opportunities to uh, trade using this methodology. So uh, here we have on the 13th of February, we have this, uh, you know, by the way, this is uh, sort of like a, a shooting star candle. Okay, so that's another indication. Anyway, it goes up uh, on a four-hour chart. It goes up uh, to the um, 50 period moving average. This is a downtrend now. Uh, 50 period moving average, okay, and then we could drill down and we go to uh, uh, where it started, and this started right here on the on the 13th, okay, and then we have a touch of the uh, overbought area and then a turn down there, which is also, for me, considered, uh, you know, a cross if it touches and turns down, okay, and then we could drill down to the 15-minute chart and we can simply go to... Uh, the same thing. Let me see. Okay, th that uh, happened right here. Okay, and this is pretty straightforward. Okay, so right here, this turn occurred uh, right on the 13th. And uh, if you're looking for a breakdown of uh, of the previous candle, then you got it uh, immediately. Okay, and a breakdown from there. And your stop loss, of course, you have to put it uh, in a good place. And for me, it's right up there. Okay, wherever you got in uh, on this, down here, even lower, or up here if you're lucky, then uh, you've got your stop loss up here to take you out of any of any of these trades, and then uh, a move to the downside from there. Okay, let's go back, and it just happens like that repeatedly. Sorry about that. I'm still a little sick. Sorry about that. Okay, so uh, it happens. Um, it can happen repeatedly through the course of this uh, this particular downtrend. Okay, so we got uh, we got a correct order of moving averages for a downtrend, and then uh, we've got the turns. Uh, we got the crosses down. Let's, let's see right here. Crosses to the downside here. Okay, uh, cross to the downside here. Now, why uh, there's a cross to the downside here? Why don't I take this one right here? Um, you know, which, uh, why didn't I take that? Because it didn't go to the uh, 50 period on my 
on my longer term chart, okay? Um, and the same thing going forward. Uh, DZ Vista, do you have stops and pips, like 50 on daily entry? No, I don't do that. Uh, I don't do that. Why don't I do that? Because uh, for me to say, uh, you know, I, I'm sure many of you heard me say this before, but uh, for me to say, um, you know, I'm, I'm trading the daily chart, and uh, every trade I take is going to be 50 pips because, you know, I like to keep it consistent. Uh, I would never do that, okay? I used to do that a long time ago, very long time ago, but uh, why would I never do that? Because it's completely arbitrary. It's got nothing to do with the market, okay? You could base it on an ATR you know, average true range or what have you. But to say, you know, uh, I'm taking a, a trade on uh, on a daily and I, I'm, um, you know, I'm going to take 50 pips uh, stop loss on every single trade, that for me makes no sense at all because uh, I'm looking for the market to tell me I'm wrong, not for my arbitrary 50 pips to tell me I'm wrong, okay? Unless you do something like uh, base it on an ATR, average true range or, or something like that, or uh, based on volatility, something like that. Uh, that makes more sense than just to uh, pick a, a number. You know, so I'll, I hear a lot of people say, uh, I got a 20 pip stop loss on every single one of my trades. Uh, for me, uh, you know, it doesn't really work. It doesn't really work well for me. Okay, uh, so hopefully you got that. Um, I think I'm running out of time here. Let me just quickly, uh, just to give you some, uh, you know, indication of, of uh, you know, what we're looking at here. Um, what I actually wrote about today was, uh, was uh, pound dollar, okay? So you look at pound dollar. This is an amazing chart, um, and this is just to show you. This is aside from this uh, multiple time frame thing. But uh, here we got to run to the downside. We got to pull back strong resistance at 154, okay? Which is also 38.2% uh, Fibonacci retracement of this whole thing. Do, do Fibonacci's matter to you? I'm not sure, but uh, you know, is that coincidence? I'm not sure either, but. Here we go. This is strong resistance right here. And uh, and then we see uh, price retreat from that level, retreat from the 154 level, and a move to the downside. Okay? So uh, I'm looking for, eventually, I'm looking for a resumption. Whether it happens, a resumption of the downtrend. Whether it happens here at, 30, at the 38.2 at 154, you know, not sure yet, but I'm looking for a resumption, uh, you know, after this correction to the upside, a resumption of the downtrend. Euro dollar, uh, same type of thing. We, we're seeing some consolidation also, you know, around the 38.2%. Uh, percent. You know, usually I'm not that much of a Fibonacci guy, but uh, you take a look at this, and, uh, you know, it, it's uh, it's pretty nice. You see this uh, little consolidation right here around the 38.2, uh, which makes you wonder, is it going to uh, continue the downside, you know, um, after this uh, move to the upside and this consolidation uh, around here? Uh, perhaps a breakdown below 130, uh, you know, I am looking for a resumption of that. Now, one thing I wrote about the other day, which was remarkable, is Aussie dollar. You take a look at this, we've been between 101.50 and 106 uh, ever since uh, back here, right around the July of 2012. This, this is a really clear trading range, okay? So most recently, late last week, we hit a high you know, somewhere near 106. So this is uh, adhering pretty well to this trading range, and then we see a move to the downside. When we saw this, um, let me make this a little bit bigger. When we saw this really nice candle, this is on the daily chart of Aussie dollar. When we saw this really nice candle here, okay, right at support, 11150, okay, and this is a hammer candle, okay. Um, so we had a hammer candle here. It gets rejected right around 150 which was where this range has a uh, uh, bottom, okay? And then to the upside, I was looking for a retest, a move back up to retest 106, okay? So we're looking for, a, you know, really clear range play on Aussie dollar. So I'm looking for that. I was looking for that, and then, uh, you know, uh, what happens? It approaches it. It doesn't quite touch it. It approaches it by, uh, let's see, we hit a high of 10, uh, by, you know, short, uh, we're short maybe 19 pips from uh, 106, but then, uh, you know, we see strong resistance around that area and then a move to the downside, a big move to the downside today. So, uh, you know, we're looking at, uh, uh, you know, really clear technicals on Aussie dollar and uh, really clear um, range play. Okay. Uh, dollar yen, uh, you know, uh, we, we're seeing a pullback now, but I'm looking for a, a lot more upside uh, moving forward as well as on uh, euro yen. Okay. Uh, let's see. 
uh, K. Chen, uh, H4 lower high, RSI at ADA level equals sell on M5 chart. I'll take your word for it. Boyke, where can we see your daily commentary these days? Uh, you could see it at, uh, uh, you could see um, it on uh, cityindex.co.uk. That's where I usually place my uh, my um, daily commentary, okay, including today. MRC, e.g., uh, can can be the case to use retracing more than uh, EU. Uh, I'm not sure. I, I don't have a, a GU. Uh, I, I don't have a, um, uh, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, GU is retracing more than, uh, oh, okay, let me, let me take a look. GU is retracing more than EU. Yeah, I mean, um, yeah, yeah, I, I, I mean, in terms of uh, percentages, you know, not really. But uh, yeah, I mean, there has been a big move to the upside. I mean, we have we saw over uh, over 600 uh, pip move to the upside in uh, in pound dollar since the low down here in uh, in mid March. But I think uh, I'm running out of time here. I think I've over uh, overstepped my bounds here in terms of timing. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, please feel free. Let me uh, type in my let me type in my um, Email address. Okay, if you have any questions about uh, about the uh, this webinar or anything really regarding trading or uh, you know forex or any of that, please feel free to email me. I, I put it right up there. Uh, I think I've run out of time here, but uh, I would like to thank all of you for your time today, and see you on the next webinar. Thank you very much.